Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires today. Two of the most powerful civs in the game. One designed to blow you to pieces from afar, the other to get right up in your grill. Fall under the control of two of the best players in the game. As Hera, playing as the Turks in red, gets ready to take on the Viper, playing as the Teutons in teal. Now while the players heard their hurtables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to feudal ASAP, let's take a look at the civ matchup. We'll be watching today. Now, the Turks are civilization built around gunpowder. Their gunpowder units have extra HP, are created faster, come with cheaper technologies, and some of their gunpowder units can be upgraded to get extra range. Now, staying on brand, their unique unit is the Janissary, a more expensive but overall less accurate hand cannoneer with more HP, a better attack, a bit more armor, but no bonus against infantry. Now, to support these gunpowder units on the field of battle, the Turks can field some pretty decent supporting units of their own. To start with, their scout line units do come with extra pierce armor. Their cav archers can be upgraded to get a massive 20 extra HP, and their scout line units automatically upgrade to the next most powerful unit. And by that, I mean the scout becomes a light cav, becomes a hussar automatically upon reaching the next age, which saves them the resources and the time required to upgrade these units. Now, in order to be able to afford their gunpowder units, which if you play this game, watch this game, know this game, you know are pretty darn expensive. Turkish gold miners do work 20% faster. They get the chemistry upgrade free of charge. And the upgrades I just mentioned from Scout to Lightcap to Hussar do say, does rather save them about 1,300 resources in total. Now, immediately to the east, we've got the Viper in, I'm going to call it Teal. I know some people call it Cyan. But I'm going to say teal just because to me this looks like teal. I know teal might be a little bit darker than cyan, but it's easier for me to say teal. So, uh, yeah, deal with it. <laughs> the Viper as the teal Teuton. Very much like the Byzantines, this is a civilization designed to take a beating and still stay standing. All their barracks units, all of their stable units get free extra melee armor starting in castle all the way up to plus two for free in Imperial. Their siege units can be upgraded to get a big old plus four melee armor boost. And their towers have extra space for more units to garrison inside and fire extra arrows. And by the way, the same goes for their town centers. Take a look at this. Zero out of 25 garrison space compared to the usual zero out of 15. Now, they also get murder holes and herbal medicine for free. So basically, units can heal super fast in castle and they are very much protected against melee units. Now, those same Teutonic castles can actually be upgraded themselves to not only come with extra range, but also fire arrows when infantry is garrisoned inside, which is a pretty damn big deal because in Age of Empires 2, only villagers and archer units garrisoned inside a castle will add extra arrows to that castle. Now on the field of battle, all Teutonic units have a higher resistance to conversion, and if they're hurt, can be healed by monks from basically twice the distance, which is great news for their unique unit, the Teutonic Knight, a super slow but incredibly powerful heavily armored infantry unit. And to support a big, hungry Teutonic population, Teutonic farms are 40% cheaper than normal. Those are the two civs. I'm incredibly excited. Not only are these two OG civilizations hearkening back to 1998, 1999, Age of Kings, but man, oh man, are they so much fun in their own right. Like I said, two incredibly powerful civilization. One basically designed to blow a hole in your head from very very far using some of the most powerful units in the game and the other basically a street brawler civilization is there anything that the Teutons have that doesn't come or can be upgraded to get extra melee armor man oh man can they take a punch and man oh man can they give a punch if they want to in the meantime though both players 18 19 villagers apiece I say 18 19 it's exactly 18 19 are both heading up to feudal age let's take a look at their bases see where those resources are primary gold very much in the backwards position for the viper primary stone i will call this middle of the road right as he moves out with two militias and okay a whole bunch of villagers we got a little bit of extra gold in the back a little bit of extra gold and stone in the front and i don't mind these forests at all a bit of a triangle shape here means the viper can very easily wall this base off if he wants to hera has now discovered where his opponent is. The Viper, I'm assuming, has already seen because he is already sending his army directly for Hera, whose primary gold is also a little bit off-center. 
primary stone nice and secure in the back an extra gold patch to the south an extra gold patch to the north where's his secondary stone Ooh, very far off campus where are these villagers going oh is <laughs> is the viper gonna do is the viper gonna do a tutan tower rush oh my god he's got two villagers on stone is he gonna do a tower rush yes he is <laughs> so as i mentioned because teutonic towers can garrison 10 villagers instead of the usual five i shouldn't say villagers uh, villagers are ranged units instead of five man oh man is a tutan tower rush pretty damn powerful although to be honest the vipers only really brought five villagers here so not really any different than any ordinary tower rush from any other civilization at the moment no extra hp uh, i compare the tutans a lot to the byzantines right now the byzantines would have a bit more hp on their towers with only five villagers okay i mean i can see if you add a sixth the seventh but for now, five villagers are what we've got. By the way, let's take a quick look while villagers and militia both attack a barracks. Where are Hera's forests? Oh, I don't like, I, I don't mind these forests at all. Also three forests, also in a pretty damn good triangle shape to secure their bases. So let's see how this actually goes. I mean, I, I'm high off of uh, calling it right that the Viper was going to tower rush with two villagers on stone and five villagers attacking in the forward position. So, man, oh, man, watch out for more predictions on my part, which will probably all end up being wrong. Watch this game devolve into uh, some kind of matchup between these two civs that no one could even think about. In the meantime, the Viper is exploring the southern reaches of Hera's base. He's been here before, I can tell. But now he's back. He wants to see what else is up, and he brought a few spearmen along for the chase, because why the hell not against this scout cavalry? Now, luckily for Hera, no forward resources except my favorite lemon bushes. Oh, let me click them so the uh, butterflies... Usually when I click them, the bu pretty blue butterflies start popping out. And oh, <laughs> the viper is taking Hera's pretty yellow fruit bushes, lemon bushes, whatever the hell they are. As another mini battle shapes up here to the southeast of Hera's base. Although it does look like the viper is going to get the first kill here. Oh, a bit of a traffic jam here as the spearmen get clogged behind the militia, but doesn't really matter. Archer down. First blood goes to the Viper. And let's see. So again, I'm, I'm very curious. Only five villagers. I mean, obviously, you don't want to send way too many villagers as part of your forward attack presence if you're going to tower rush. But I mean, at this point... Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. At this point, this is not a two, really a, anything special out of the Teuton. Actually, wait a second. No, no, never mind. There are only five villagers here. This could just be any old tower rush. And right now, it's a, a little lackluster from the Viper. He's got enough stone. He's got enough wood. He can build one more. Let's see if and where he builds it. Right now, the town... Okay, there it is. Again, I'm not too sure about these locations. What... What resource are you laming here? Two farms? Hera can just pivot to the left. Okay, although never mind. Hera says enough is enough. You pushed me. You poked me. You have uh, were on the playground and you poked my chest long enough. I'm going to retaliate and fight back the Viper getting armor upgrades <laughs> for his cavalry. And let's see. I think I this is... No, these are the militia. Where are his two scouts? I'm very hesitant to click on the two scouts. I want to see how this shapes up. You got villagers attacking a tower, tower attacking a tower, tower attacking villagers. The usual mishmash of insanity in Age of Empires when things get real messy real quick. And now Hera's towers are actually full and they are attacking these villagers, getting a good amount of HP. One basically almost dead. Has to be very careful, does the Viper? So his third tower accomplishing literally nothing except... I guess it's a victory if you get your opponent to spend 125 stone, which means Hera's going to have to mine stone if he wants to get a town center. Although that is uh, neither here nor there. He's got 240 food, and I don't see... No, there it is. There's the secondary building. So he can go up to castle once he adds a bit more food. But once he's in castle, this is going to be very interesting. Let's see if the Viper lets him mine stone. But again, aside from getting these the, this food, which... Our Turk doesn't seem to be minding at all, having expanded everywhere with his villagers and now <laughs> managing to also get 
the Vipers' uh, initial scout militias. Man, oh man, let's see how this shapes up. This is very interesting because, again, these towers laming nothing, but he still has five villagers here. They are getting all of the food and free resources that you get from your opponent. It's like conversions. It's a double whammy. Not only do you get it, but your opponent does not get it. So it is a, uh, what, what do we have of usually in a patch? 750 food, I want to say, right? Five patches of 150? Am I, I <laughs> I'm going to ask the comments as well. I think we uh, usually have 750. So that's a 1,500 food swing for free. Assuming Hera didn't take any of these berries, but we see a mill here already. So we know he took some of the berries or some of the lemons behind this. Let's take a look at the Viper's base while he continues putting all the pressure on Hera. He's got the market. He's got the archery range, the stable. Where, oh, where is the blacksmith? There it is right underneath my nose. He's literally got every single potential building he could have in Feudal Age already up and running. And both players are heading up to Castle. And despite the presence of two and a third tower... Hera is actually ahead 20 seconds in going up. And here we go. Okay, so the 125 stone that he needed to build his own tower, not exactly end of the world. We'll see how Hera decides to respond to this. I mean, seven villagers on stone suggests he might be interested in maybe plopping down a castle somewhere. Somewhere, perhaps, that gets both of these towers. But where could that be? Maybe up here? I don't know. I'm going to stop trying to predict. I'm going to stop trying to call. This could also just be for a huge amount of town centers. Man, oh man, I hope this game doesn't end. At least, at least give us 45 minutes. Give us 45 minutes between these two players. Okay, the fruit bushes are starting to get, you know, very, very low on lemons. He's still 50 seconds away. I'm very curious, number one, to see how Hera will react once he hits castle. And number two, what the hell is the Viper going to do with these five villagers? So two big question marks I have right now. By the way, how much of the Viper's base has Hera seen? Okay, so he's seen a good deal. Loses an archer here to these skirmishers in the middle of the map. But now the Viper might lose one of his scouts. And in eight seconds, take a look. This zero plus one will automatically become zero plus two. There it is. And unfortunately, I don't have any scouts from the Turk to show you that would have automatically become light cab upon reaching castle age okay Viper says F that I am absconding well okay so Hera is placing down a castle okay well, maybe with another upgrade this should be able to reach the tower we'll see we'll see if he gets Bodkin right now he's sitting on fletching skirmishers moving in but uh, at this point like I said this uh this attack from the Viper initial attack this is a lot of stone to have spent to get some free food but the follow-up is here one night already out two more in the production tab one town center two town centers for him as a second goes up for Hera don't mind the location of this at all protects the southern perimeter of his base gets the gold lots and lots of room for farms this obviously is amazing wood farms gold this one exactly the same wood farms gold but Hera, Hera's going to see it right as it goes up, but he's got to be careful. He's got to be so careful. Now he's treading, he's threading the eye of the needle here right between two town centers. Oh, that is a sour loss for our Turk who loses three archers right as two scouts pop in. Ooh, dude, who, who wins this? Two scouts with nine HP versus one archer with nine HP. Who wins this? I don't know. We'll keep looking, uh, or rather keep an eye out. Ooh, we're going camels. He saw the knight. And did I see the pellets of a gun from the Janissaries? Yes, I did. Oh, come on. I want to see the engage. I, I mean, the, the scouts have to take it, right? The one dies automatically, and then the second closes. Actually, one may... No, no, this one should die automatically. Actually, no, three pierce armor. Yeah, definitely the scouts take it. What the hell was attacking the, the lion here? Did he have villagers in the town center? Now, one issue that our Turk is going to have to contend with if he's going cavalry, which, number one, I don't mind. Or rather, our Teuton is going to have to contend with. The uh, Teutons do not get husbandry, which means 1.35 is the speed that their heavy cavalry caps out at versus the 1.45. And with husbandry, that jumps up to 1.6 for the Turks. 
which means they're what 20 percent faster than the Teutons. so a very interesting matchup this reminds me a lot of mongols versus Teutons, for example where one civ has potential mobility the other has tankiness although for now it looks like hera not really going for mobility five janissaries already out only one camel has notched up two kills this camel so not bad at all Okay, Hera not going for the extra range upgrade, so this tower is still here, which means his units are going to take a tiny fraction of an HP damage. Oh, look at that sour catch here for our Tudin, who loses a monk to this light cab, who is now running around, getting vision, seeing what he can get done. Three Janissaries also in the back of our Teutonic base. I don't know where the hell these uh, cavalry units thought they were going there for a second, but Viper manages to convert one of Hera's light cavalry units and thus ends all Turkish aggression in the back of the Teutonic base. <laughs> Hera's back. You want to send another monk? Go for it, he says, as his light cavalry just hangs out here and chills, waiting, Ooh, waiting, at, salivating at the prospect of another monk. Okay, bloodlines forging. So our Tudin is doubling down, at least for the moment, on his heavy cavalry units. 66 villagers to 66 villagers, 9 army count to 11 army count. We'll call it 9 because these two archers are not. They look away. They're in the middle of nowhere, number one, and they're feudal age relics. So basically, killer army count, identical. Villager count, identical. It is now our Tudin who is at the back of our Turkish base, while at the same time our Turk continuing to send little clumps of Janissaries. Remember, their range has been reduced in the penultimate patch from 8 to 7, so they do still pack a punch, but you have, uh, uh, as, as an opponent, let's say, you have more of an opportunity to kill them because they don't kill you from as far as they used to. The Viper sees this. The Viper reacts. Oh, they're getting into a nice little choke point, though. Okay, never mind. They leave the choke point. One of them becomes the target of a monk. Man, oh man. Can they pack a punch? They are going to die for sure. But let's see. They already took one knight down. The other knights look at their HP. Down significantly. Oh, but the monk, I was going to say the monk could convert them, but no, Hera has, has other plans as he snipes the monk. Come on, get that tower. Get the tower. And now the light cab is running away. Look at that speed 1.65. And here we go. Hera throwing literally the kitchen sink. What the hell does he need these two archers for? That's why he's not getting any more ranged upgrades because he just is not planning on going ranged. Unless that range involves holding a nice, beautiful cannon. And cannon. And his light cab are back. He is getting handcart wheelbarrow for our Turk. Our Teuton, rather. As now Hera gets a fourth town center. Both players, yet again, 85 villagers apiece. The camel now with husbandry, 1.6 movement speed. So I don't mind what the Viper is doing here. Both, Actually, both players, to be honest, sending out small groups of units... This, to me, tells me we're going to see a nice game with big, or at least at least one big battle, I'm hoping. Because right now, what they're both doing is sending out small clumps of units. One is sending out knights. One is sending out janissaries. Maybe some light cat to see if he can snipe a few monks here and there. Sneaky, sneaky Hera. But what they're essentially doing is just keeping each other occupied while take a look at their resources. Hera, halfway up to Imperial. The Viper, about a third of the way up to Imperial. Gold wise, and food count won't take very long. With f actually, what am I looking at? Sorry, wrong side. 43 villagers on food will not take him long to get the requisite food needed to go up to Imperial, especially if he's only producing knights. 60 food is not that much. Now, the camels on both sides, so the north and the south, are going to oh no, zone out these knights, but there's a lot of knights here. <laughs> okay, our Teuton's going monks. Getting the old fervor, making the move a little bit quicker. And now I see some cavalry archers being thrown into the mix. Why did the Teutonic Knights not attack this camel? Oh my god, 
It seems like everyone froze there for a second. Uh, maybe it was my game, but 4 HP, this camel escapes and is now in the warm, embracing arms of a monk who waves his book, waves his crook, and magically the HP of the unit increases a very, very defensive castle out of our Turk. He does not want to get raided. He sees this huge body of cavalry. Ooh, do they see the monk? They do not. Line of sight on the monk, not exactly fantastic. And I think he peeled off his only scout. <laughs> I think if the scout was still there, he definitely would have seen that monk. Whether or not he could do something about it is a different issue altogether. And look at that. Look at that. A minute 40 from Imperial. Three minutes from Imperial. So I was... I'm happy to be right twice this game. Oh, wow. I shouldn't let it get to my head because, you know, I'm going to call something next and it's going to turn out to be the exact opposite. But in any event... This isn't about me, this is about the players, both of them basically at the same population, 126 to 132, both heading up to Imperial, both starting to amass some pretty big army. We'll see if our Turk doubles down on Cav Archers, for now he's going up to 8, so maybe we'll see Sepahi, which adds 20 HP to these Cav Archers, and man oh man, can they take a beating with that. I mean, it's a Castle Age upgrade, so we probably would have seen it by now. Still no bloodlines, by the way, for our Turk, who, if he's going Cav Archers, might want to uh, <laughs> might want to get that upgrade. Teutonic Knights continue circling the north. Ooh, 606 stone, nine villagers on stone, but Hera's going to catch this. Is he going to catch it? Is he going to see? Oh, the the grouping of the units. He saw, he saw the tip. He saw the tip, and immediately, my God, these expert players, these pros with their vision. He saw just the tip of one villager. And now the Viper's villagers, they've got the stone. The castle is plopped. I'm going to keep this fairly zoomed out so that we can catch these two. Okay, never mind. Cav Archer's heading home. Heavy Camel Riders are the order of the day for our Turk. Man, oh man. Let's see it. Will he be able to get the villagers? One goes down. Monk. Oh, I was going to say sacrifices his life to get the castle up, but no. Hera deciding it is not worth it to get a monk, but lose one or more of these cavalry archers, which basically means the Viper is free to get that castle up. It looks like a converted cav archer here died. And the Viper's going cavaliers. And by the way, look at their armor now. These units plus four, even though he's only... Got plus two armor because he's an Imperial, so he gets plus two for free. And man, they're not even fully upgraded yet. Seven melee armor on a Cavalier. Not that these heavy camels give a rat's ass about your armor. They come with a nice 18 attack bonus against Cavalry, which gets factored in after. And now a Turkish Knight takes the high ground against... The Teutonic Knight for a brief second, and then the Teuton, now he's got Cavaliers. He's revealed to Hera that he's got Cavaliers. And now, ooh, Cavalier Paladins! <laughs> oh, I asked for this game to go at 40, give us 45 minutes. And man, oh man, at this point, honestly, there's uh, Sepahi, by the way. So their HP, now they've got Bloodline, should be 70. We'll jump up to 90 once that happens, Cav Archers with 90 HP is ridiculous. But as I was saying, I, I, at this point, are, are they just playing for us, the viewers? They're both kind of, like I said, I got the sense when they started sending in, you know, five Janissaries, four Knights. Here's a unit. There's a unit. Let me just build up my economy. Let me just get up and running. I got the feeling that they were kind of wanting to get to Imperial, kind of wanting to get their big armies out. And in 52 seconds, there's nothing bigger than the Paladin and the Teutonic Paladin, even without Husbandry. I don't know. Tell me, would you give up Husbandry for two extra melee armor? That's a pretty big deal. They may not move fast, but man, can they take a punch. Basically means the camels with an eight attack do one damage. Look at that seven pierce armor. One damage. One damage before the bonus takes kicks in. Ooh, and he's going to lead them on a merry little chase. Now they're paladins. Now they're probably going to turn around. Oh, no, he's leading them to the castle. 
Ooh, brilliant move there out of uh, the Viper. Hera doesn't notice. He's going to lose a bunch of camels. Their base armor is shite, and they are also not fully upgraded, so he loses all of his camels there. Not a good trade for our Turk, but he has bigger fish to fry than a few camels. He's got <laughs> the game's most popular unit fully upgraded. I, I, I say most popular. I probably mean most loved. Who is, is there a unit in Age of Empires that's more beloved that players love to see more than the Paladin. I mean, look at the Teutonic Paladin. Fully upgraded. 18 attacks, 7 armor of all kinds, 180 HP. Man, oh man. Do they even need husbandry at this point? Hera, though. Hera's gonna clog up the works with a bunch of Hussars. And let's take a look. These Cav Archers attack on a 4, and we saw the Paladin has 7 Pierce armor as well, which means they do 4 damage which means they need 25 heavy cav archers to kill one paladin. 25 to 1 is how tanky this. Now, I keep in mind, I fully expect Hera to start raiding any moment. Ooh, what are you villagers doing? We'll keep an eye on you. I fully expect Hera to start raiding with Hussars because he has no choice. Right now, the Viper's in his base. The Viper's about to gut his economy. But if you had to raid between Hussars and Paladins, man, oh man, let's compare. <laughs> let's just do a very quick comparison of the stats. Look at that armor. Look at the attack. Look at the HP. Movement speed, though, is really, really bad for the Teutons. Man, oh man, do they need a boost to their mobility. Or maybe not. Maybe then they'll just be too OP. For now, this castle, prescient by our Turk, is able to start attacking the Paladins, but they are everywhere. Our Teuton has killed 73 villagers already at the 45 minute mark of the game. That being said, our Turk has just returned the favor. He's got eight kills, not exactly an equal comparison, but nine, you never know. Here we go. The number is definitely gonna go up again. Our Turk has no choice. But the start rating, I mean, look at how little HP is going down on these Paladins from the Cav Archers. And there is all of a sudden action everywhere. And unfortunately for our Turk, it is in front of his base. I mean, Cav Archers on the high ground, 25% extra damage is going to be pretty damn good, especially when augmented by heavy camels. The Viper, is he throwing away too many Paladins? Now, the beauty of raiding with Paladins, by the way, is unlike the Hussars, which attack on a base of a 7, which is uh, basically nothing, basically an archer unit, these guys can absolutely demolish buildings. They have no bonuses to speak of, but with the 18 attack, it's like a Hussar, but a Hussar with a massive, massive attack against buildings. So it's kind of like a twofer unit when you raid. If there's no, you know, there's no villagers left, you can just destroy a, a barracks. You can destroy one of these stables. For now, though, destroying aside, our Tudin 300 stone is going to be able to repair this castle for a bit, but he's got to come up with a response. More Hussars raiding to the south. These villagers are now tiefing the stone on the Viper side of the map. Tower is finally gone at the same time. This is what I'm talking about. The Paladin. It's a dual-use raiding unit. Look at this. Hera's entire northern base has been depopulated. 110 villager kills, not a single working villager. He's finally sending a villager with what looks like an axe in his hand. Where are you going up here? Man, oh man, no villagers being produced, no villagers being produced, no villagers being produced. Hera, he's stuck at 80 villagers. Okay, okay, he's replying, but 29 villager kills now, 30 villager kills probably. Is there any defensive measure here by the Viper aside from town centers? No, there are not. He lost his castle as well. Hera, they're not pursuing the issue, allowing these villagers to mine gold. Uh, where they're going to drop the gold off is, uh, you know, anybody's guess. Oh, they're going to try to escape, but they're going to escape camels and cab archers. This is going to be an absolute massacre. An absolute massacre. But at least the Viper, I mean, each one of these villagers should be carrying gold. At least the Viper is denying gold from his for his opponent. Another body of Paladins moves in. I don't know why I keep zooming in on these uh, Palisade walls. I keep seeing a teal dot in Hera's base, expecting it to be something. By the way, these Paladins, only seven? Only three? 
Well, it was seven before. I wonder what the third one got, because I think there were three there before. Okay, so now a few paladins are here. They're going to help. The problem is Hera can kite these paladins. Well, I, I shouldn't say kite. He can reduce their HP all the live long day. We've got a bit of a peaceful beatnik community here. Give peace a chance. They are putting flowers in the barrels of the Janissaries. No more Janissaries. Lion springs into action here, right? As the Paladins move in. I mean, what the hell do you do against 2,700 HP when you attack on an 11 and the, your opponent's got 7 damage? Uh, 7 armor. 2,700 HP. What's 2,700 divided by 4? 600 and something? High 600s? That's how many shots these Cav Archers need to take to get rid of these Paladins, which is just bonkers. So at best, though, you know what? Never mind, Hera. He's doing what he should be doing, which is poking away at the HP, allowing his... Oh, no. Six camels. Oh, no. Heal the camels. Does he have a monk? Okay, he's training one monk. Relics also. The Viper, in the meantime, has gathered all four relics. And look at this. Look at this. He's trying to uh, keep these heavy cab archers... Okay, fails there. Let's see what these heavy cab archers decide to do, where they decide to go. And again, those villagers that were taking the stone a little bit to the north get caught out by the paladins. <gasps> oh no! Oh no, Hera! Hera's trapped! The Viper, Viper's Hera! The Viper, Viper's Hera! But the mobility again, man, oh man, if this was any civilization with husbandry, there would be at least three more of these red bodies on the ground, but the maneuverability of the Turkish army right as another Teutonic castle falls is a sight to behold. Man, is it fun to watch games like this. I mean, we're at 55 minute mark of the game. I have no clue who the hell is winning this game. Their scores are literally 500 points apart. And it's not 2,000 to 2,500. It's 13.1K to 13.6K right as Hera comes in. But the Viper has left a few paladins. His villagers garrison immediately. And these, <laughs> these Hussars are going to do so little damage. Look at the HP on the paladins. It is not going down at all. Oh, the Hussars. I said this in yesterday's game. It's like trying to beat someone to death with a shoelace. Man, okay, the Viper Viper thinks he's going to get raided, so he escapes, but Hera runs right by these villagers. Not too sure what these three farmers think they're doing here in war country. Another Hussar will die to the Paladin, but a few more villager kills added to Hera. Hera's starting to catch up. 62 villager kills to 115. We have yet to see any major cataclysmic battle. I hope we do get to see it. The Viper is at 69 Paladins. For all you pervy meme lords, 69 paladins, 70 paladins. What the hell do you do against 70 paladins? I guess you go camels. He used to have six, now he's got 14. He's got to get double that, triple that if he wants to take on these paladins. What's the attack speed? Is it still the 1.9? Camels do attack a little bit slower at two. Okay, this is one way to throw the game for the Viper right now. Carve out little clumps of Paladins. I mean, there's... What the hell was the point of that? <gasps> Look at him. Why is he hesitating so much? Are you going to engage into this? He's, he's giving Hera the gift of a lifetime. Hera doesn't need to engage with 40 Paladins. He can engage with clumps of five or six with his Camels, who have racked up 21, 19 Paladin kills. Wow, what an absolute waste of Paladins out of the Viper there. Why did he not engage with his full army? Why did he engage with small groups? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And not 11 at once. I think it was first 5, then 6. And now all of a sudden, these Paladins, their HP, I mean, still a good amount of HP. 4,300 HP. Garrett's Castle, he's got 65 stone left. Should fall. He's down to 13 camels. Hera is not losing camels. That's a problem for the Viper. That is a big problem for our uh, our, tu our Tudin. The Sars trying to run circles. Oh, they waited until he mined out the tree. Is that what happened there? Was he jacking that one tree and then Hera waited until he was finished? 
Forget that, the bigger battle shaping up to the front here. This Treb is still up here at buying stone, I think. He's got zero villagers on stone. Unless this uh, is five or six stone is what he had left from the original 60. Our Turk is raiding temporarily to the back. He's raiding in the center, but this is a kill zone for his Hussars. The Hussars try to run in here, try to get the Treb. The Treb, though, is being repaired by seven villagers. And again, the Viper engages with a part of his army, not the whole army. What the hell is he doing? Underneath the castle against the counter unit with cav archers that are going to tickle away the HP. Take a look. They're down 1,500 HP. 30% down HP. Trebball misses. Villager cool as a cucumber. Hera is buying stone as much as he can afford with 40 gold in the bank. And the Hussars come in from behind. They try to poke at the Treb. They fail. Looks like the Viper tried to do the same thing to Hera's Treb and also failed in the face of a whole bunch of camels. But our Turk has been knocked down to six heavy camels. The Viper? The Viper, what is he doing? He is giving Hera the, a chance to come back into this game. I mean, unless he's doing this for... I, I Honestly, I think these players know that this game is going to be posted on the internet. I shouldn't say I think. I suspect. I really hope that they know this game is... They're, they're playing this for us. These are... Uh, you know, if I thought that they were, you know, some kind of ego battle or like a serious conflict, I think the Viper would have chosen Dravidians just because of all the ongoing drama between them and Dra Dravidians. The Teuton versus Mongol. Castle does finally fall. Doesn't really matter though. Hera's got one, two, three more. The Bermuda Triangle of castles here. And the Viper yet again engaging with a small portion of his army while the rest of his army... Villagers are not repairing the Treb. Villagers are not repairing the Treb. The Treb goes down. Both players Baroque is a joke. The difference is one's got 41 Paladins. The other's got a Skirmisher. <laughs> a Skirmisher fully upgraded attack-wise. Oh my God, how quickly did he melt? How quickly did he melt? And now he's lying dead in the sands of Arabia. And now the Viper is going to raid with these Paladins, and there's not a damn thing that our Turk can do about this. There is nothing that the Turk can do to stop these Paladins. I mean, come on, 180 HP, 7 armor of any kind. His only response is to try to gut more of the Viper's economy than the Viper is gutting of his. Again, I come into the Palisades for no real reason. The Cav Archers are here, their HP... Not really damaged in the last little while, but again, the Viper, he's got a hammer, and what he's doing is he's making a bunch of little hammers out of it. And this is what I mean by dual dual purpose unit. If you can't find villagers to kill, just take down a structure. Look at how quick, how long would it have taken Hussars to do that? At the same time, though, this is a lot of Hussars for our Turk. 10 out of his 23 Hussars are here, and doesn't really matter how many villagers they get. And he, take a look, Hera count. Oh my God, oh, I'm trying to stumble out a sentence. Hera's villager count, almost identical to the Vipers. Viper finds more villagers. Has he discovered this farming community? Yeah, he's seen it. Ah, <gasps> and Hera. I mean, Hera's got so much more food. He could produce Hussars for days and days. Holy moly, what a fun game. And they both die, look at this. Hera with the score lead about 350 points ahead of his opponent. That's how close this game was. Look at the kill count. 162 villager kills for our Teuton, 140 for our Turk, and basically less than 100 kills, 389 to 476. Man, what an absolute fun game. Who the hell expected to see the Viper raiding with the Teutonic Paladins? And now we've got... Even the Scout Cavalry, by the way, uh, with the extra armor, Spirit of the Law recently published a video, I want to say yesterday or the day before, about which are the best Hussars to raid with or Light Cavalry units to raid with. And the Teutonic Scout, because remember, Teutons don't get Light Cav, they don't get Hussars. They basically cap out at Scout Cavalry. Their Scout Cavalry are not bad at all. They're similar to a Briton Light Cav. Anyway, I, I, you should definitely watch that movie if you play the game and if you go to late stage and you like to raid your opponent. Spirit of the Law has a really cool video on which Hussars he thinks are the best 
and uh, are the top of the line Hussars. Wow, what a fun game. 163 light calf slash Hussar. 263 Paladins. And I can very much say Paladins because the majority of the game, I think they were Paladins. They were Knights for a while when he had like 20 or so, then a few extra Cavaliers. But the majority were Paladins. PKPM middle, PKPM end. Both players above 200. Oh, economies. Economies, what do we think? What do we think? Probably the Turk on gold, but everything else Teuton? No? Okay, never mind. I mean, this is not a huge... This is less than 10% difference. More wood for our Turk, more stone for our Turk. About two, ca two, two and a half castles worth. More food, and look at the gold. Holy moly, Relics playing a huge role here. Almost 3,000 extra gold for Relics. But even without that, he'd be about, what, five, 6,000 gold ahead? Holy moly. I don't think conversions really played a big role. No, four conversions out of an army of 292 is basically 1%. Man, what an absolute fun epic game. I don't know why I keep coming back here. It's like a, uh, like a tick. I see this big teal blob in the middle. But yeah, I, again, I suspect these players are just having absolute fun. I mean, Hera, I know, is doing a massive, massive Twitch stream uh, at the moment. And he is just having the time of his life. I, I, I love watching these players, uh, the Viper on Facebook, Hera on Twitch. I love watching them play. They're just so much fun to see how much fun they're having. And they just try different things. And I suspect, again, that both of these players, maybe they had an agreement. I have deleted uh, chat in my settings. I don't like to to have the chat between the players included in my casts. <laughs> Look at this battle. But I, it's possible they both said, hey, let's just get to Imperial. Or it's possible that they just had a sense of one another and got to Imperial anyway. But man, oh man, I'm glad that they did. We got to see all the Turkish supporting units. Didn't really get to see that much gunpowder. He had, I think, a Bombard Cannon out at one point. He had a few Janissaries. But against the Paladins, the quicker-moving Paladins, you, yeah, Janissaries may not necessarily be the way to go. Instead, these quicker-moving Cav Archers did an amazing job. The kill count, not the highest. But what they did do was soften up the Paladins so that the Hussars and the, um, the Heavy Camels could engage and even till the end Hera was preparing to push out with more and more Hussars. Now, could he have weathered the Viper down in another 10, 20 minutes? Maybe with enough Hussars, maybe with enough support. I mean, 17 heavy Cav Archers is still pretty damn good if you can do hit and runs. And the fact that these guys move so slow mean that hit and runs are even more effective. Could the Hera have just built? I mean, look at this. He's got 80 population room. Could he have just built 30? 35, 40 Hussars, maybe? And just absolutely swarmed. I mean, five Hussars per Paladin with Cav Archer support. Maybe he could have picked them off one by one. The Viper is kind of carving his army up a little bit, which uh, I'm not too sure what the idea was behind this. I mean, what's the point of carving up your units? He's got one here. He's got a few one here. A few more. Uh, oh, look at that. They're leading the Cav Archers on a chase. But man, at the end of the day, does uh, Teutonic power... In your face power, outmuscle the Turkish range and outmuscle the Turkish camels, hussars, cav archers, and even janissaries for a little bit. The Viper just managing to do way too much damage to Hera's economy. And even though Hera did catch up ultimately in villager kills, it, I think he realizes there's just nothing left to do against these paladins. He can build hussars all the live long day of the Viper can manage to somehow get gold and add more. I mean, 40 Paladins is a lot. I might revise my statements about pumping out Hussars. 40 Paladins is a significant number, even though a bunch of them look at their HP is basically, I mean, basically dead. He's got no monks to heal them. I mean, what he does have is uh, free herbal medicine, but unfortunately for him, doesn't have a castle. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, though. The Viper with the Paladin, the Teutonic Paladin, takes the W, but GG. To both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.